Hey everyone, this is Stacy, one of the subject matter experts here on the EGMAT team, and I'm going to work through this sentence on a threatened hagfish. So thank you for joining me, and it's time to get to work. First, we're going to read thoroughly through the sentence and extract the meaning. And we're going to start with step one of that EGMAT three-step approach using that meaning analysis. We're going to utilize that sentence structure to really figure out what the author is intending to communicate here. So as we begin working through the sentence, we read, although when a hagfish is threatened. So right away we know that we have a comparison of some sort. So I'm anticipating since I know when a hagfish is threatened that I'm going to get something is going to happen when this hagfish is threatened. So we keep reading to find out what. It will secrete slime. Now. Anytime I see a pronoun sitting in a sentence, I always like to stop and check for that proper association as to what the pronoun is referring to. I call pronouns pronoun demons because when they come out to play in a sentence, they can create a lot of confusion if they're not used properly and they don't refer to the proper noun entity. So here, it will secrete slime. It seems to be referring to the hagfish, and I'm going to check that association by plugging it into the pronoun place. Hagfish will secrete slime. That seems to check out, makes logical sense. So I'm going to keep reading, find out what's happening next. That is small in quantity. So here, that is referring to the slime. Slime is small in quantity. Okay. It expands several hundred times. All right. So here again, I have it, my second pronoun. So the first it referred to hagfish, so the second it, logically, would refer to hagfish, right? I mean, hagfish could expand several hundred times. That's logical, isn't it? I mean, my mind directly goes to bloat from finding Nemo, the puffer fish, that expands several hundred times. So why couldn't a hagfish expand several hundred times? Okay as it absorbs seawater. Again, I have this pronoun it sitting here. Now this one, I'm a little more confused about. It absorbs seawater. Hagfish absorbs seawater. Now my logic is telling me that a hagfish lives in seawater. And it doesn't make much logical sense that it would be referring to a hagfish and saying that the hagfish absorbs seawater because a fish wouldn't absorb what a fish lives in. That's kind of circular. So now I'm really questioning is it really referring to hagfish. The first usage, definitely logical. But then I get this discussion about slime up here, and I'm wondering, and all this information that follows about slime, all of this is talking about the slime and not really about the hagfish. So the second two usages of it could possibly be referring to slime, and that actually would be more logical, that the hagfish will secrete slime the slime is small in quantity, the slime expands several hundred times, and the slime absorbs, as the slime absorbs seawater. That makes sense. And then the sentence continues to say, forming a slime ball. So the slime would form a slime ball as it does all this. Okay, that, again, that referring to slime ball, making sense, can coat the gills of a predatory fish and either suffocate them or distress them enough to make them flee. Okay. So them here referring to the predatory fish, distresses these predatory fish, suffocates them, makes the predatory fish flee. Those pronouns are checking out okay. So the only problem I really have is with these pronouns of it communicating logical meaning that seems they're creating a bit of confusion here. So let's pull these key aspects and piece together what the logical intended meaning is. When a hagfish is threatened, it secretes a small amount of slime. So that's this first piece of the sentence that we get right up here. Makes logical sense. The slime expands several hundred times as it absorbs seawater, forming a slime ball. That's the second piece, which seems to make more logical sense than the fish expanding. Sorry, Blit, but you're the only expanding fish. Okay, making sense. And then the third piece down here that the slime ball then coats the gills of the predatory fish, suffocating them, distressing them, making them swim away. All right, so lesson learned with this meaning, beware of the pronoun demons, because when they come out to play in a sentence, even if they're not in the underlying portion of the sentence, you have to take the time to make sure that they are making logical sense in what they refer to. 
because as we said, logically both pronouns need to refer to the slime. They can't refer to the hagfish because that creates illogical meaning. So it's the slime that expands several hundred times and it's the slime that absorbs the seawater. So now that we have our meaning in check, we can move to our error analysis. And spending that time up front with the meaning really helps us move through the error analysis quickly. We don't have to dive into the deep abyss of grammar. We can quickly see that we have a pronoun error leading to a meaning error. We see that that first use of it indeed does check out in the underlined portion, but the second and third usages are not making any logical sense. They completely create a meaning error and confusion. So it, it's really important here for you to have that big takeaway that you have to analyze how the entire sentence is functioning together, how the underlined portion and the non-underlined portion really work together. We have to pay attention to both parts. So let's move through those answer choices and see if we can find an answer choice that gets the job done. So we know choice A is not going to work out for us because of that reference of those pronouns to a hagfish. Now take a look at choice B. Here we have the use of this modifier when threatened. And this modifies the action of expanding several hundred times and associates with the subject it in the non-underlined portion. Now it in this object is referring to a small quantity of slime. Now this is completely illogical because this is suggesting that the slime expands when threatened but we know it is the hagfish, not the slime, that is threatened. So we're gonna go ahead and reject this answer choice as well because of that modifier error leading to illogical meaning. Now, choice C. This option is repeating that same pronoun illogical error that we had in option A. It refers to hagfish and creates the same meaning chaos as we already identified. So we can quickly reject choice C. Now, choice D is indeed our correct answer choice. Although the slime secreted by the threatened hagfish is small in quantity, the slime expands several hundred times as the slime absorbs seawater. So the second and third usages of it that follow this underlined portion are now referring to the slime and our pronoun demons have been taken care of. They now properly refer to the slime instead of a hagfish and give us that meaning that we need. Now choice E, this is our second most popular choice. Well, it is the most popular incorrect choice. And if you landed on choice E, but you rejected choice A, then you need to ask yourself, why did you reject choice A? Because you weren't thinking of logic and meaning if you rejected choice A and you were okay accepting choice E. Because choice E creates the same illogical meaning that choice A does. The pronouns are still referring to the hagfish. So we have that same meaning error and the same chaos created by those pronouns in the sentence, which gives us nonsensical meaning here. So if you rejected A, but accepted E, you need to ask yourself, am I asking that important question? Does it make sense? And here, it did not. So a few key takeaways for you. Always remember to ask that question, does it make sense to decipher the logical intended meaning of the author? and use the intended logical meaning to better understand the author's intent. And then once you have that meaning, use that to help you identify the errors in the communication. You saw how quick we could move through that error analysis because we spent that time up front extracting the meaning. And then always consider the non-underlined portion of the sentence and how it interacts with the underlined portion. And don't let structural changes like putting slime in the place of hagfish as the subject throw you off. As long as the structural change communicates that logical meaning, you're good to go. So make sure you watch out for those pronoun demons and always put meaning first. With that approach, you will just keep swimming through the ocean of SC. Happy learning.